So today we're going to be looking at this video that was shared to me from TikTok by a brother named Terry. Shout out to Terry for sending this video in. This video is quite an interesting one. It's from an interview where we see this man basically hold a mirror up to the face of the West. Then he chewed them and spat them out. Now, as always, because this video is quite long, I would not be interjecting as much because I do not want to disrupt the flow in the conversation that was being had. But put in mind that once in a while, I will pop up. So that being said, without further ado, let's let the clip roll. A number of comments have objected to you using the general term the West, and they want you to be more specific because there is no monolithic block called the West. It is an unfair generalization, they say. You know, it's strange, if you think about it. It's strange that you don't want me to call you the West. You don't want everyone to be lumped together under that term. It's not my term. It's your term. I didn't come up with it. You did. You call yourselves the West. Western civilization. We all grew up hearing about how wonderful the West is. Western achievement, Western thought, Western enlightenment. You're happy to take collective credit as the West for whatever you think is good. But for the bad things, you want to disassociate yourselves from it. When you're talking about the bad things, then you're like, well, what West are you talking about exactly? Who do you mean by the West? The way you people tell the story, people like uh, Douglas Murray or Jordan Peterson or Sam Harris or uh, Richard Dawkins or uh, Hitchens, Christopher Hitchens, all these types, you would think that every European on the continent participated in painting the Sistine Chapel, everyone painting in shifts. All of you collectively invented penicillin from the telephone to airplanes, from the, the cotton gin to the microchip. You all did that as one gigantic team effort. We the West uh, abolished slavery. We, the West, gave women the right to vote. We, the West, developed modern technology. You like being called the West then, but just bring up one, just one, of your innumerable atrocities. And then everyone starts looking around. Who, who, me? Oh, you must have me mistaken for some other uh, person, some other West. Q, you know, shaggy. It wasn't me. And one thing that really annoys me is the fact that this group of people successfully made themselves the face of everything good and positive in this modern world and bask in the glory of their achievements in air quotes whilst looking down on others and taking jabs at others for not having the same level of achievements in air quotes under their belts. And they do all of this while conveniently not putting into consideration the fact that while they were free and had the time to explore and invent things, they don't put into consideration the fact that when they were being free to build things and achieve things, other groups of people were literally being colonized and enslaved and stuck up in their countries just being docile working for the colonial hoodlums. We all were not out here having the same opportunities to be inventive. Four generations of people across the globe were just paused. Like, we cannot begin to imagine the numbers of talented people that we never got to see their talents because they were being subdued and colonized and enslaved. So when these people come out and talk about or brag about all of these things that they were able to achieve in air quotes during the, the same time that people were being colonized, I'm like, you should have shame. Because if we all were on equal footing, we all were free, everybody would have been doing it in their countries as well. So don't make it seem like everybody was just here quiet and doing nothing while you guys were just out there doing stuff. When you bloody knows that the reason why nobody else have this much things to show in the modern world right now is because we, we just gained independence in 1960. So let's be for real here. You guys had 400 years head starts. You should not be bragging to anybody. And let's not even talk about the fact that they find so much pride in setting monuments, but they were so busy on the continent and across the globe destroying other people's monuments. Like you are here right now being proud of these monuments that you guys have. But not only did we not have the chance to build new monuments for ourselves, the ones that we had in the past, you guys destroyed them. And why I have been putting their achievements in air quotes is also because we know that these people also stole stuff, right? We know that these people stole other people's invention. They stole enslaved people's invention. 
we know this so yeah not everything that they quote unquote built for themselves or you know created invented they actually created they were thieves and also we cannot not talk about the fact that a lot of these things eh, are just rebranding a lot of these things that they slap western on and take credit for africans on the continent had already been doing these things from way back even before colonization like when people say western medicine for example why does western medicine have to have all of this paparazzi when they are basically just taking herbs that indigenous people used to use to cure themselves when they were sick in, back in those days and then they repackage it into tablets like you basically just took the herbs that we used to boil and drink or squeeze and apply on our bodies to treat ourselves and you turned it into tablets and now you're like western medicine another very good example is the caesarean operation abbreviatedly known as cs wait a minute is abbreviatedly a word anyways i don't care english moving on you guys know what i mean <laughs> About it. Midwives in the African countries of Tanzania, Congo, and Uganda have been successfully performing C-sections for hundreds of years. The mother would be sedated with a lot of banana wine, and the tools used during the surgery were sterilized with fire. The midwives would also clean their hands with wine as well, and then wash again with water. The baby survived, the mothers recovered well, and they were given herbal treatments to promote wound healing. Infection, shock, and excessive blood loss were pretty uncommon. The most reported problem was that it took longer for milk to come in, so usually friends and relatives would help the mom nurse the baby. R.W. Felkin actually documented a C-section that he witnessed in Uganda. To him, it was a marvel that needed to be spread to the west of the world. And it was. This is Habar and Gemma. Follow me if you want to learn more about African politics and pop culture. But of course, who takes the credit for inventing caesarean oppression? Who takes the credit for knowing that before you operate on someone with your operating tools, you first have to sterilize them? When we know fully well that in those days, these people didn't even used to wash their hands. They didn't know they had to wash their hands. Hell, people that didn't know that they needed to be bathing regularly. They were not washing their hands before they were working on people scientifically, medically, right? But who today takes the credit for knowing that you have to first wash your hand before you start operating on people? You have to first sterilize the tools before you use it on them in the operating room. Who takes the credit for that? Who takes the credit for knowing that you have to give someone like something to maybe numb them so they don't feel the pain while they are cutting at them in the operating room? Who takes the credit for that? All of it is tied into western medicine right even though people literally had been doing these things for hundreds of years before them the same thing for when people say western education whenever i hear that saying it really used to make my ear ring because what exactly did they do that they deserve all of this paparazzi for when it comes to us talking about education and its history right where it originated from various races of people before colonization were educating themselves just fine what is education education is a process of giving and receiving necessary information that would not only help you as an individual but it will help the society at large who is an educator an educator is someone who gives out this necessary information that would help the general public right then what does it mean to be educated to be educated means that you have received all of this necessary information systemic information if you want to call it that would help you as an individual and also help you navigate around your society or your environment and also help you help your society right these people were able to pass on their knowledge about agriculture from one generation to another these people were able to pass on their knowledge of palm wine tapping and making of our local genes, right, or alcohols across the globe. These people were able to pass on their languages from generation to generation. These people were able to pass on um, medicinal knowledge. They have herbal doctors 
and they were doing this from one generation to another. These people were able to pass on their architectural knowledge from one generation to another. So if people across the globe before colonization have been able to pass on necessary information from one generation to another for the continuous survival and sustainability of their societies, why exactly in hell does Western education have all of this paparazzi when they are basically doing exactly what people in the past are doing? They just again slapped Western on top of the education, but they are not doing anything different from what the people in the past were doing except for inventing uniforms so everybody can now wear uniforms and sit in classrooms to go get information that they would have gotten anyways from their indigenous educational system. If whatever the systems that those people were using to educate themselves were left alone and the people allowed to develop those systems as they progress in time and given the opportunity to develop their own curriculums as they see fit, adding new subjects or even creating new subjects that would be tailored to serve them and their environment as they develop as a people. Then the educational system we would have had on this continent would have actually been useful to the African people. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe I popped up for nine minutes straight. I am so sorry, guys. That wasn't the plan, but I really needed to get that out of my chest. Please forgive me. Now, I'm just going to let the rest of the clip play on its own without it being interrupted. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. And once again, I'm so sorry. Bye. I'll see you guys in the comment section. A number of comments have objected to you using the general term the West, and they want you to be more specific because there is no monolithic block called the West. It is an unfair generalization, they say. You know, it's strange, if you think about it. It's strange that you don't want me to call you the West. You don't want everyone to be lumped together under that term. It's not my term. It's your term. I didn't come up with it. You did. You call yourselves the West. Western civilization. We all grew up hearing about how wonderful the West is. Western achievement. Western thought. Western enlightenment. You're happy to take collective credit as the West for whatever you think is good. But for the bad things... You want to disassociate yourselves from it. When you're talking about the bad things, then you're like, well, what West are you talking about exactly? Who do you mean by the West? The way you people tell the story, people like uh, Douglas Murray or Jordan Peterson or Sam Harris or uh, Richard Dawkins or uh, Hitchens, Christopher Hitchens, all these types, you would think that every European on the continent participated in painting the Sistine Chapel, everyone painting in shifts. All of you collectively invented penicillin from the telephone to airplanes, from the, the cotton gin to the microchip. You all did that as one gigantic team effort. We, the West, uh, abolished slavery. We, the West, gave women the right to vote. We, the West, developed modern technology. You like being called the West then, but just bring up one, just one, of your innumerable atrocities. And then everyone starts looking around. Who? Who, me? Oh, you must have me mistaken for some other uh, person, some other West. Q, you know, Shaggy. It wasn't me. My forefathers didn't own slaves. My forefathers didn't slaughter the Native Americans. My forefathers were just poor, innocent peasants. I have nothing to do with it. Innocent as can be. You want to take collective credit, but you want to individualize blame. But you'll say that Isaac Newton, for example, is a product of the West. Michelangelo was a product of the West. Mozart was a product of the West. Leonardo da Vinci, Thomas Edison, Steve Jobs, they're all products of the West. But somehow your villains are all bastards. Illegitimate children that you don't want to claim. No. Hitler was your child. King Leopold was your child. Harry Truman was your child. A man who killed more people in a matter of seconds than anyone in the history of the human race. And not to mention every American president after Truman, you know, from the Korean War to Vietnam to the dirty wars in uh, Central and South America to Panama, the first and second wars in Iraq, Somalia, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, and before Truman. I don't think that the United States has had a single decade in its history when it wasn't slaughtering some people somewhere in the world. These are all products of Western civilization, too. But anytime these crimes uh, get brought up, you deny collective responsibility. 
I mean, if I try to list all of your crimes, I can't even remember them all. But if I try to list just the ones that I can remember, your battery will die before I can even properly get started. You know, I saw a video uh, the other day of Arma Soleiman. And he was asked by some lady, some woman, who asked him, why don't Muslims condemn uh, acts of terror by Muslim criminals? And he was trying to be patient, you know, his style. He was trying to be kind. He was smiling, a very forced smile. And he said, no, Muslims always condemn these things. But why don't you condemn when one of your people murders Muslims in a mosque? And of course, he has a point. But also, of course, they don't. Of course, you don't condemn those things. You've got statues of Winston Churchill, who starved millions of Bengalis and who used poison gas on the Kurds. You not only don't condemn your terrorists, you not only don't try them for war crimes as they should be tried, you re-elect them into office. Not just elect them, re-elect them. And you deny any responsibility for their atrocities. No, if you want to be called the West, when it comes to any positive achievements, then you have to accept being called the West for all the full catalog of inhuman, vicious, uh, genocide, murder, torture, bigotry, exploitation, oppression, assassinations, coups and subjugation, evil and brutality, all that your people have ever committed. That's why I always say Western civilization is a sarcastic term because you never civilized and, you know, we made cool stuff is not a defense. Your approach to morality is uh, let's not and say we did. Let's not be moral, but say we are. You think that righteousness is denying the evil you do, not stopping yourselves from doing the evil. As long as you say you don't do it or you call it something else, then somehow uh, you're not evil when you do evil. As long as you don't admit it. It's upside down world. Every day is backwards day in the West. Bad is good. Wrong is right. Hey guys, this is Yvie again. I just thought I should tell you guys who this man is. For those of us who might be wondering, his name is Shahid Balson. I just thought I should add that information to the video because some of us might be wondering. So yeah, thank you very much for watching again. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.